Welcome to UETU Sectiona program. This is in continuation with the last session uh, where we had covered uh, uh, special topics in from the module five. Two topics were covered. This will be the third topic. Uh, so third topic is uh, medical gas supply. So medical gas supply completely uh, it is the part of the hospital uh, uh, hospitals services where uh, medical gas could be take uh, medical gas could be supplied centralized medical gas could be supplied through pipelines for the whole of the hospital or hospital services so medical gas supply is uh, nothing but it's a centralized medical gas pipeline system in uh, which is a vital and integral part of a modern hospital when it comes to hospital this is what uh, this is a basic necessity for uh, hospital uh, so uh, this has to be supplied with uh, emphasis on safety reliability and purity of the gases so the central pipe medical gas system is one of the newer types of hospital plumbing system why this is uh, been covered in this uh, particular uh, subject of uh, uh, water supply and plumbing uh, uh, sanitation is because this plumbing uh, plumbing system is adapted to supply these also likewise like we studied in uh, like we saw in other services of uh, solar hot water generation how piping is used and um, centralized lpg system also how piping is used and uh, in medical gas also all these are special services not directly what we call for water plumbing as water only for water supply or things like that but piping system or plumbing system where the supply of uh, other things also can happen not just water so this has been covered under that okay so uh, no so the medical gases used in what are the different types of medical gases used uh, where it is used in the used in hospital is something like which we need to be little bit aware of uh, while uh, designing this the medical gases used in anesthesia and intensive care and sometimes even in wards or oxygen nitrous oxide medical air even air and uh, antenox carbon dioxide heliox nitrogel medical vacuum waste anesthetic anesthetic gas disposal or anesthetic gas scavenging system so these different gases are used in these different uh, for in hospital oxygen is one of the most common widely used gases for life support and res respiratory therapy besides anesthetic procedures so large hospitals even in laboratories sometimes sometimes in manufacture facilities they all require highly purified and sterile gases such as oxygen nitrous oxide compressed air vacuum systems for different ap applications it could be in large hospitals it could be in lab laboratories it could be in manufacture manufacturing facilities where oxygen or any other compressed air is used for ma manufacturing so all these institutions can have this supply which is done through pipeline so when which can be centralized as such so when required in small quantity quantities portable cylinders are used which are replaced when empty so portable cylinders can also be used if if in case there is a small quantity of requirement of medical gas so in large medical facilities portable cylinders constantly need replacement so which is difficult so movement is cumbersome and inefficient it becomes very inefficient to uh, reach such a large requirement so also large volume of gas is left over unused in cylinders and sent back for refilling which accounts for wastage of fuel so medical uh, these uh, these piped medical gas system which is called as pmg piped medical gas system 
which is called as PMG enables it enables efficient use of gases which reduces the wastage which this is one major advantage of this because there is a efficient usage because there is a efficient usage of gas and it reduces wastage wastage is reduced because uh, in the portable system what happens uh, uh, even if there is a uh, half of the cylinder is used it has been sent away because after the system is used or uh, not used if it is unless until there is a complete need of the um, uh, more gases if there is small quantity requirement then that leftover gases or every time refilling every time um, shifting that so lot of gas is wasted in that case but this reduces the waste because it is always connected to one particular system. So, PNG system must be laid as to be uh, accessible for repairs and maintenance. So, the location and the proper planning of this is required so that it should be accessible for repairs and maintenance. All pipes should be of copper. This is one mandatory thing which has to be looked into. All pipes should be of copper and how to carry an appropriate legend to identify the gases carried. So, this is very important, it has to have an appropriate legend. In hospitals, this becomes very important to have an appropriate legend, color, color codes. All the gases will be color coded and the same color coded pipes are trans, uh, provided from the supply to the receiver points. So, most of the times these pipes which is carry, uh, where the pipes are carrying these different different gases are run under false sealing. So, all these are run under false sealing. Concealed spaces, it can be false sealing, concealed spaces and wall chases are not permitted. So, the outlet for outlet for each gas is of a different type to ensure that an apparatus is not connected to a wrong gas outlet. So, this is very important due to this medical uh, uh, supply it's which is related to health and uh, critical aspects are more. So, it is very important to have uh, outlet different different outlet has to be provided for each of the gas say for example they have one need air they need uh, oxygen vacuum everything has to have a separate outlet nitrous oxide whatever gases they require based on the specialities all of these should have an outlet different different outlet for one one type of gas and it should be it should make we should make sure that it is not connected to the wrong gas gas outlet so pmg so the coding is very diff, uh, different legend is very very important color coding is important so pmg system is executed by specialist contractors having considerable experience this is one very important thing this on the site is always executed by specialist contractors not the normal or people who are not trained with that is definitely not possible to execute this on the site. So, specialists are only required to provide this facility on the site, but it should, uh, but people should be, uh, but we as an architect we need to be aware of these things also. So, so uh, few system components to briefly tell you each medical gas must be supplied from a separate system. It is essential that all parts of each system are uh, gas specific to ensure that there is no possibility of cross connection between systems that is the main thing which we will have to look into it there should not be any cross connection of gases. So, Sources, it, con, uh, it uh, contains of uh, sources, piping networks, different valves to control, valves to supply and control the gas, warning and alarm systems if it is uh, empty or if it is uh, uh, something is required to be done or there is a flaw in the system. So, warning and alarm systems has to be there outlets and inlets separate outlets and inlets 
and secondary equipment. So, this is one uh, schematical, uh, uh, this is one schematical uh, uh, diagram just to show how uh, the supply will happen to the hospitals. So, there is uh, this is one uh, liquid oxygen tank. So, liquid oxygen tank is kept outside usually may be basement or on the ground or towards the external landscape or uh, something like that could be provided not at the higher level mostly. Then there is a manifold, then compressor, vacuum pump, gas supplying monitoring and alarm panel. This whole thing where we can see these uh, uh, gas cylinders are placed gas cylinders, different types of gas cylinders, it could be uh, this black could be one and this could be one. So, different types of gas cylinders and there is also a requirement of compressor and a vacuum pump to provide vacuum. So, we can see that the whole of this gas supply monitoring is a central monitoring system. So, one gas type is here, second type is here, third type is here, fourth type is here. Number of uh, various uh, gas requirements will be fulfilled based on the uh, number of cylinders is which is required. So, these cylinders are placed there. This is for example, this is one cylinder where if the cylinder gets empty, it can be it is uh, it is noted that it is uh, alarmed that there is no uh, uh, gas in that. So, it can be replaced or refilled, it can be pulled out and refilled. So, this whole uh, room is called manifold room, where usually cylinders are placed and this side we have a machine room. And uh, now, from this central, uh, central space, all the pipes are taken, connected either vertically or horizontally in the building. So, it just connects to the different requirements could be ICU, could be common use, could be staff nurse staff station or nursing station or could be ward room. So, uh, uh, this green color is one type of gas, then this dotted line which is in red color is one type. Likewise, when it is supplied outwards different we can see different color black, yellow, blue, green, red, black, yellow, blue, green. So, like this we have uh, pipes which is running individually to all the facilities. In ICU if we see all the pipes are separated, outlet is also separate, medical gas outlet and there is a control. Likewise, in common use space, there is a shut off wall, pressure, pressure monitoring and alarm panel, alarm panel, where it can be controlled, the whole of this floor can be controlled here. So, likewise, uh, the usage can be different. So, you need pipes to provide these gases. So, few things which we saw and that can be discussed in this. Sources are supplies that produce the flow of medical gases through piping networks. So, there are four main sources of medical gases, bulky systems, manifold systems, medical air treatment systems and vacuum, vacuum pumps. So, these are the four sources where gas can be supplied. So, manifold systems is nothing but what we saw here manifold systems where cylinder, cylinders are placed. So, manifold systems or it can be called as manifold room also. It consists of high pressure cylinders on two banks. One is back up to the other. So, one is where direct surf, uh, supply is provided and the other one is a backup. In addition, main control panel is installed for primary and secondary regulators, pressure regulators and warning lamps. So, uh, that is for this shows for nitrous oxide, this is a manifold room or a manifold uh, space, where you uh, where these gas cylinders are provided, one is a backup and another one is a 
direct supply. So, if anything is uh, empty, it can be easily replaced and it can be taken out, taken in, uh, can be done because uh, this is not directly placed in the uh, uh, rooms of hospital. So, it is in common space and people come and uh, place it here and remove. So, the supply is continuous without any interruption. Vacuum pumps are mechanized devices that create a negative pressure in the piping system. The pumps should alternate automatically. A reservoir tank is used for storage to permit cycling on and off instead of continuous operation. Each pump should be capable of maintaining 75 percent of calculated demand during peak time. This is about vacuums. So, it will have ma mostly main, mainly four of uh, these things, main hospital supply pipeline, feeder pipeline, main hospital supply pipeline, feeder pipeline, distribution pipeline and drop pipe. So, these four things are very important for any connection from one level to the another level also. So, main hospital supply pipeline or gas service specific truck pipeline, trunk pipeline for from manifold in the build, from manifold to the building. Uh, from manifold is the main source for the supply. So, from there it has to go to the other parts of the building. So, feeder pipeline, feeder pipeline does that what does it do? It includes risers. Risers means which from the lower level to the higher level the pipe is connected and the supply of gases are happening. So, which includes risers and uh, horizontal and vertical, uh, vertical it can be vertical or horizontal up to distribution line, it goes up to the distribution line. Then after it goes to the distribution pipeline or branch pipeline which serves one floor or a part of it, no vertical movement. Distribution is always a horizontal pipeline where it serves only one floor or part of it. It need not be the whole floor. And drop pipe, the drop pipe is from the horizontal, it goes down to the required uh, uh, patient area or ICU or uh, laboratories. So, through the term, it is the terminal units where gases are used. So, these four uh, main uh, pipelines are provided for supply of gases. So, in this image approximately like you can just see there are different spaces, different floors like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 floors okay. and uh, uh, there is manifold room where the cylinders are placed bottom. Here we can see here manifold room. And then there is a monitoring room next to that, monitoring room of this. There is a machine room below and a cold evaporator room outside. Outside the building there is a tank which we saw. So, here what happens all the, this is a main supply pipeline. From here it goes to the feeder line, feeder line is a vertical line. So, uh, yeah, feeder pipeline, then comes the distribution, then the drop pipe. So, feeder line is this vertical system or horizontal which goes into the, uh, it can be a horizontal which, which comes from the main source and goes vertically to different floors. So, this feeder line will help in transferring the gas from lower level to the higher level. And, uh, uh, different rooms could be placed at different levels like here in this treatment room and emergency OPD is in first floor, ICU, CCU and operating theatres are in th second floor, nurse stations, patients ward on top floor, delivery room, premature room on the fourth floor. So, this feeder line helps through taking up till the last floor. From there again it goes to the distribution, each floor has a distribution horizontally. From there to bottom it goes vertically down which is a down pipe and reaches the end point. So, piping networks is very important when it uh, comes to medical gas supply. Medical gases and vacuum are distributed via pipeline distribution systems to provide gas or vacuum at the end point or terminal units. The terminal units may be either wall mounted or pendant mounted. 
wall mounted is nothing but which is uh, going through the wall pendant mounted can be hanged which is hanged from the ceiling or which is inside the false ceiling the pipes should be made of high quality copper this is one main thing which is to be considered the pipe material should be of high quality pipe or copper seamless type and uh, non arsenic moreover it should be protected against physical damage and corrosion and color coded as per gas content it has to be color coded as per what gas is going inside that pipe supplied through that pipe so the walls are very much necessary to control the quantity and to stop the gas supply if required so there are two types of walls zone walls and service walls so zone walls are used to isolate large parts of the system like you will have to zone completely zone out and uh, stop supply for one particular zone so like that you can it can be planned and provided or service walls so zone walls are used to isolate large parts of the system therefore rooms for modification and or repair if there is some kind of modification and repair there is still provision of doing uh, providing sup, uh, supplying gas to other parts of the uh, building and uh, it should be labeled to indicate the rooms that they control on the other hand service walls are used to isolate certain part of the system for modification and repair so it can be service walls also where very essentially these uh, service zones require these kind of supplies accordingly they are accessible by the clinical staff so outlet and inlet is very very important for these kind of supply each of these which you see white blue red yellow so they are all different different gases so it has to be properly allocated and fixed so outlet or points at which connections can be made to the medical gas piping system to supply gases under pressure while inlets are supply vacuum there are two styles of connections quick connect and twist on so outlet should be gas specific and also color coded so that is about uh, medical gas supply how it can be taken through the pipes and supplied for the whole of the hospital hospital services so the next one is uh, storage of uh, high speed diesel so uh, which might not be commonly used in structures but then yes we need uh, certain kind of uh, services to be known for this also so diesel fuel originated from experiments conducted by german scientist and inventor rudolf diesel for his compression ignition engine he invented it in 1892 petroleum derived diesel is composed of 75% of saturated hydrocarbons and 25% of aromatic hydrocarbons so there are uh, three different types of uh, diesel today which we use in modern days one is petroleum diesel bio diesel synthetic diesel since we are talking about high speed diesel just to know what is diesel what are the different types of diesel is that slides now petroleum diesel uh, is uh, so now we know three types petroleum bio and synthetic diesels in petroleum diesel uh, which is also called as petro diesel or petro diesel or fossil diesel is the most common type of diesel fuel so it is produced from the fictional distillation of crude oil between 200 degrees centigrade and 350 degrees centigrade at atmospheric pressure it's a mixture of carbon chains that typically contain between 8 and 21 carbon atoms from per molecule so synthetic diesel is something which we will discuss now synthetic diesel can be produced from any carbonaceous material including biomass biogas natural gas coal and many others the raw material is gasified into synthesis gas which after purification is converted by the fischer tropsch process to a synthetic diesel it is actually developed from biomass biogas natural gas coal 
and many others and this is converted into synthetic diesel uh, by the process of fischer tropsch process. The process is typically referred to as biomass to liquid, biomass to liquid, gas to liquid, coal to liquid depending on the raw material use. If we are using coal, it is from coal to liquid CTL. If we are using gas, G2, gas to liquid, JTL. If you are using biomass, biomass to liquid, that is PTL. So, that is converted into synthetic diesel. So, this paraffinic synthetic diesel generally has a near zero content of sulfur and very low aromatic content. So, uh, reducing unregulated emissions of toxic hydrocarbons, nitrous oxides and particulate ma matter. So, we have two grades of diesel fuels, one is high speed diesel and another one is light diesel oil. So, high speed diesel is which is used in automotive applications that is what we are supposed to discuss now for this particular topic. So, this is a type of a diesel which is used. So, light diesel oil used in stationary applications. So, diesel fuel properties are influenced by the source of the crude oil and the method of refining. So, we use this high diesel fuel in mobile applications, trucks, locomotives and uh, now in passenger cars, power generation, pump sets. We use it in pump sets in agricultural field, we use it in uh, power generation, we use it in passenger cars, I mean the cars, uh, normal cars, locomotives, trucks, mobile applications, high diesel is, high speed diesel is used. Why is it called high speed is because of the flash point. The flash point is something which is, uh, uh, is, uh, is a property of a diesel which is minimum to 33 degree centigrade for automobiles. So, uh, it has uh, two more properties of uh, flame length and cetane number. Flame length is a diesel oil should not produce a flame length of more than 18 mm. Cetane number is knocking quality of diesel oil which is measured by cetane number. So, high speed diesel are normally used in the engine which runs above 750 rotation per minute such as buses, locomotives, trucks. So, and uh, 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 low diesel oil is used in below 750 uh, rotation per minute engines. Generally, it is used in steady engines or to burn in furnace. The one which we get on petrol pumps, diesel pumps across the nation is HST. So, petrol pumps and HST is something which we have to. So, petrol pumps, diesel pumps, uh, they provide this high speed diesel which is used for. So, the storage there is very different. The storage uh, is uh, Sometimes these uh, 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 vessels, petroleum vessels are stored underground with very safe uh, uh, requirements and then transferred through the pipes to the pumping engines. So, we have come to the last part of the module that is uh, central vacuum and waste collection. This is quite common nowadays about uh, uh, having central vacuum and uh, waste collection. Uh, so, it is uh, nothing about dealing with the waste collection. Um, uh, traditionally, there is a tendency of uh, people coming and uh, collecting from uh, houses or uh, households or from other, uh, other uh, places or sometimes it is dumping on the, uh, dumping on the road or anything like that. But this is one proper uh, central vacuum waste collection where there is uh, less of human resources required for this and then still waste collection can be segregated and can be done easily. So, likewise city wise it can be done without human intervention, but then in through the building as per the building in uh, individual building level also it can be done uh, with uh, less human intervention. So, a central vacuum is a vacuum cleaning method 
which is built into the structure of a building and offers access through connections in rooms and hallways. Now, mostly what we are discussing is about one particular building or a structure where vacuum can be done easily or uh, cleaning and vacuuming or uh, sub, uh, removing the waste from the house through pipelines and taken out of the building. So, vacuum pressure for the system is created by centrally located motor. Motor has to be provided to pull the or to suck the waste which produces by vacuum capable of removing all forms of debris including dust, dirt, metal fillings, plastic, all types of uh, waste could be separated from the house or a household. So, depending on its design, the material to be collected, central vacuum systems can be filtered or unfiltered. The inlets for a central vacuum system are connected by ductwork. So, this is what we have to look into because in one particular building, if the central vacuum system has to be done, there, should, there is a requirement of ductwork, piping or tubing. So, these three things are very important which contributes to the uh, plumbing services. So, ductwork, piping and tubing is required that is installed along the walls of the building. So, on the surface of the wall of the building, whether it is inside the building or outside the building, it can be done. So, in this particular image, we can see that there is a uh, just a brief very uh, simple example of uh, central vacuum system, where we have uh, ducts header, air ducts and central vacuum system. From here, the waste is disposed, from here the waste is disposed and taken out. So, the waste which is collected through these pipes are uh, collected in this central vacuum system and from there it can be disposed. So, here is uh, one video where uh, I acknowledge uh, the maker of this uh, video uh, to um, uh, also uh, a YouTube, uh, uh, sir, uh, YouTube channel for uh, uh, making it as a resource. Uh, I acknowledge those uh, services. Thank you for that. No more carrying heavy vacuum cleaners. Looking for power pots, handling tangled wires, or worrying about dust spills. Home vac, central vacuum system. Three layers of effective filtration for a hygienic and clean environment. The home vac central vacuum system has a vacuum unit that can be conveniently placed in a concealed location like the garage or power room. It has a cleaning port in every room which is connected through a series of concealed vacuum pipes. The home vac system offers a 100% clean home environment. With a powerful 750 to 1200 air watts, these machines can be used for a range of 2500 to 10,000 square feet with a hose extension up to a length of 12 meters. Multiple vacuum ports can be set up across your home, all with concealed vacuum piping to ensure a thorough and easy cleaning. Vacuum Retractable Hose The VRX system is a long retractable hose concealed inside the vacuum pipes which can be pulled out when you are cleaning and disappears back onto your wall when you are done. It's so simple, even a kid can use it with ease. Vacuum Inlet Port Vacuum inlet ports are placed on walls across your home. All you need to do 
is plug the hose into the port. The vacuuming starts automatically when the hose is plugged in and switches off when the hose is unplugged. Vacuum Pan Port Flow vacuum ports are installed at floor level at certain locations in your home. You can switch on this port with a gentle tap of your feet. It is typically used in the kitchen and any other location where waste can be swept directly into the flow port. Home vac central vacuum system can be used for both wet and dry applications. Accessories available A variety of cleaning accessories like extension pipe, floor brush, round brush, crevice nozzle and flat nozzle are supplied with the machine for ease of use in a variety of applications across your home. That's not all. Dust collection and discarding is so easy. Just unlock the safety latch, unmount the collection tray, discard the dust and latch it back on. All units feature a password protected smart 4.5 inch touch screen for operation. HomeVac is IoT enabled as well. What does this mean for you? You will get smart recommendations and reminders for routine maintenance. Most service requirements too can be fixed by connecting via the internet. Centralized Vacuum System HomeVac Innovative and Intelligent uh, after that, uh, we have few things to look upon that is uh, um, how the maintenance uh, that is with respect to the particular building. Now, let us look into uh, the city, si city wise, uh, um, city wise uh, vacuum system. So, the this maintenance staff which carry a hose of approximately 25 to 30 feet with a van, this uh, it will have a particular van. So, that will be pulled and uh, it can be vacuumed. So, the electric circuitry in the house is activated by a switch. Just a brief about that uh, system. So, electric circuitry in the house is activated by a switch on the vacuum port and activates when the cover is open. Collected dirt and debris go through a piping system to a collection unit that can be removable trash can or a large vacuum bag. In a filtered system, filters are strategically placed to remove particulate manner from the air. Hoses and attachments are standardized, uh, reducing the amount of equipment a cleaning staff has to carry. En Environmental Protection Agency or EPA estimates that use of central vacuum significantly reduces dust allergies. Spent air is removed into a utility space or sent outdoors through an exhaust outlet. The main components of central vacuum system with respect to the city wise if we are talking, it includes vacuum motor, canister housing, canister housing or those housing, uh, those uh, cans which is placed towards the roadside, number of different uh, colored coded uh, cans. So, for dry waste and wet waste it would be placed and uh, we also need filtration units once the waste is taken from that canister. It, it goes to the main uh, unit where filtration happens and then to the exhaust unit. The power of the system depends on the size of the motor and how the various elements are combined. How you plan these different canister based on that uh, the working of this uh, central vacuum system is dependent. But uh, uh, central vacuum systems are quiet, it does not produce any noise because the motor is remotely located, it is not just closer to the river. But the suction power 
when it comes to sucking the waste and throwing it out of the particular point, the cent uh, central vacuum systems have larger powerful motors for greater cleaning power. Greater suction means higher quality cleaning to remove the tiniest dust particles. Sometimes some systems have two motors that offers more suction power. So, if the suction power is not clear, then the waste cannot be taken out, it stays there only. So, sometimes two more than one that is two motors could be used for suck, sucking the waste. Filtration after the sucking, it goes through the pipe through the underground and it goes into the filtration unit. The filtration system is more effective and capable of filtering large amounts of dust and allergens. Harmful particles are captured and vented. Then the difficult debris, the central vacuum systems remove dry substances such as plaster, plaster dust, spilled floor, laser printer, toner, metal. So, when it segregates these kind of things, wire clippings and silvers of broken glasses etcetera. Systems without filters remove the widest range of materials, while systems with wet vacuum, inter there are different types, wet vacuum interceptors uh, separate liquids could be used. Any toxic material such as uh, asbestos should be removed by specialized equipment and not the central vacuum systems. So, there are some limitations also which this system adapts. An automated vacuum system, waste collection system also known as pneumatic refuse collection. It is also called as pneumatic refuse collection or automated vacuum collection. So, which transports waste at high speed through underground pneumatic tubes. So, that is what uh, we were talking about there are pneumatic tubes. Pneumatic tubes is nothing but the tubes which is laid underground and with the air pressure it sucks the waste from the source to a collection store station where it is compacted and sealed in containers. So, again it is taken for the uh, uh, maintenance unit. When the container is full, it is transported away. When the container is full, the whole container is taken away and emptied. The system helps facilitate separation and recycling of waste. So, this is what we see as it is. These are the containers where uh, different containers are used for different purposes, maybe dry waste, wet waste, or in the dry waste also, it could be one is plastic, one is uh, um, uh, paper like that it can be separated also dust and other things. So, once this is full it can be replaced, uh, uh, removed and replaced, but uh, what happens is these are connected by these kind of uh, pipes, these which is located on the streets are connected by these pneumatic tubes which is laid underground and from there it goes to the treatment units. So, likewise if we see here. So, there is a discharge unit from the building. This is from one building discharge wall which goes underground. In the same street maybe there is a out outdoor load station different different recycling units provided maybe one is plastic, one is paper and another one is wet waste. So, from there again it is uh, suck to an another inspection chamber. Maybe if some problem is there, it could be cleared here in the inspection chamber and then it is taken away to the central waste handling facility or maybe to the other plot wherever is requir required and as planned. Segregation could happen not in just one place, it could be happening in other places also. So, how the city plans for, its it, uh, for itself, it can be laid. So, the process begins with the deposit of trash into intake hatches called portholes. They are intake hatches or portholes, okay, which may be specialized for waste recycling and compost. Portholes are located in public areas and uh, the waste is then pulled through an underground pipeline by air pressure and created by large industrial fans in response to porthole sensors that indicate when the trash needs to be emptied and help ensure that only one kind of waste material is traveling through the pipe. Only one kind of material should go in one kind of pipe because it has to be segregated then and there. 
So, uh, the pipeline converges to a central processing facility with automated software to direct the waste. After that, it can be sent into the landfill or compost based on the requirement. Uh, so, that is about central vacuum system. So, we have come to an end of the module 5. So, these are few ref these are few references which can be taken for uh, your uh, subjects. This is a book, two, two of the books which has been referred and few of the uh, website which has been referred for the content. Thank you.